Hello. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you a couple of changes I've made to an existing advanced custom study. This study is called Move Closest OCO Order to Price. And this study was basically a simple code that I wrote way back. Um, I was trying to implement a similar functionality that exists in a software called Jigsaw Day Trader that I was using at the time in 2021. And uh, there's been a couple of changes to the, to the way it works. And I just wanted to uh, send this video to any users of the study. There's about 25 of you and probably a lot more that uh, grab the code off of GitHub, which is fine because uh, I'm going to post the new code as well. So the study has a new input option, which is uh, this one, always prioritize active attached orders. And I added it as an input setting because I don't know if everybody wants to have it work this way. So I'll basically show you what that does and then you guys can comment on it and then um, decide if you want to turn it on or off. And now I haven't pushed the update yet, but just to let you know the study is very simple. It's very redundant functionality and it's very unlikely for anything to go wrong just because of how it's designed. It's a very simple design. Um, basically it just uses an advanced custom study button and whenever that button is pressed, it executes a, a function. That's all. And uh, it's very simple. It's all inline code. There's no threading going on. There's no complex things going on. It's, it's quite, quite simple, quite redundant, and very effective uh, for moving orders quickly around. So let's talk about it a little bit more. I guess I'll demonstrate that functionality first. So I'll start by placing a new order. Uh, and as you can see, I already have attached orders enabled. Now, previously, you weren't able to move <clears throat> orders that were in a pending state with the study now you can so if you're not in any position if you're in a flat position basically uh, if you press the advanced custom study button you will be able to move your uh, target to, to the price where your cursor is hovering over and as well as your stop okay so these orders are in pending status because we're not in any position so we can move them around okay now just as a reminder you move the stop uh, for a long position when you're hovering below the last trade of price. You can move the stop as high as one below the bid price. Now, this is another change that was made that I'm going to talk about next, which is about uh, allowing you to move the limit order to a price that is marketable to essentially hit out of your trade if you wanted to. And I'll talk about that in a second here. So before I do that, I want to demonstrate what happens when you get into a position. So let's say we just get into a position here. So the study functions the same way, meaning that you can still move your attached stop and your attached target. Okay. Now what's different is if you put in another order here. So I put in another uh, pending open order to buy another contract. You can see we now have... Um, a pending limit order that goes along with that parent order as well as a pending stop order. Now, the functionality that I've changed here is that I've made it so that it prioritizes orders that are active when it comes to performing the function of moving the order. So you can see that even if this pending limit order is here, which is technically closer to the last traded price, it will always move the closest active order instead. Um, and the reason I implement that, that is just because it just makes sense. And, you know, I've been using this study for a long time and, um, oftentimes you'll have positions waiting to be filled and you don't want to really move the pending order because it's not even active yet. So the point of the study is you want to move the most, uh, closest active order, which I think that that personally is the correct way that it should be. Um, but if you wanted to disable that functionality, you would just go into the study settings uh, first second input here and then disable it and this is the way it used to work which is basically whichever order is closest it'll move so you can see in this case it'll move the uh, pending inactive order and uh, if I move that pending inactive order further away then this order becomes the closest order and now I can go ahead and move that one you see um, but the way that I implemented it now which is uh, with this item turned on always prioritize active attached orders is it'll basically only move the closest active order. So let's say we got into two contracts. Now we have two active profit takers and two active stops. It'll basically just move the closest one. Okay. And it'll just function the way it normally did. And if I had a bunch of orders, you know, pending orders here, now we have all these new pending limit orders here. When I perform the move attached, move closest OCO order function, you can see it doesn't ever move 
the uh, pending orders. It only ever moves the closest active order. Okay. So let me know what you guys think of that functionality. The next thing is um, regarding the prices that you can actually move your orders to. Uh, it's just a simple tweak. And again, this is something that I could implement with an input setting if you guys don't like it this way. So just let me know what you think of this. Um, I implemented the ability to hit out of the trade with your target order. And the way you do that is, so basically you're allowed to move your profit taker to the price that would be marketable, basically, to essentially hit the current bid. If you're in a long trade and you want to hit out, you can move your limit order to the price of the current bid to hit out. Previously, the way it worked was you could only move your limit order or your profit taker to the price of the offer. So it would always be a limit. You could not make it a marketable limit order. But in this case, I can. So if I hover right over the price of the bid and I execute the advanced custom study button, you see I hit out right there. I hit out one contract. It moved my closest profit taker to the price of the bid and it hit out the bid right there, okay? So, you know, I like it that way personally because it'll allow me to hit out of a trade quickly. The lowest price I can move my profit taker to is the price of the bid. Again, I got filled. Let's do another quick example. So here's the profit taker. I'm gonna hover over the bid price, boom, and I hit out right there. I move the limit order to that price. And the same works as if you're in a short trade. So let's say you're short, okay? I have my stop, my target, and let's say I have other orders here, pending orders, but they're not gonna be moved because we're only prioritizing a uh, sorry, active orders. If I wanna hit out of this trade immediately, I can hover over the price of the ask, and what it would do is it's gonna take my limit order and, and basically hit the ask with my limit order. And it basically becomes a marketable limit order at that point. You see what I'm talking about? Okay, so that's that. And then the last thing that was changed or implemented here is that uh, previously the way the study worked is um, there was no checks for when you tried to perform an order modification where the order was at the same price that you're trying to modify it. Uh, so basically now you will not get any messages in the trade service log if you try to modify an order uh, to the same price that it's already at. So if I just, uh, let's say let's say my order's up here at, uh, where was it? Let's say it's up here at uh, 5240 and something. If I just press my advanced custom study button to try and modify it, you can see nothing happens. You know, I can modify it to other prices, but if I modify it to the same price, nothing happens. So there's no duplicate order modifications that are allowed to go through. You can even hold the button, nothing will happen. Now, if you hold the button and move your cursor around the screen, there is a chance that you can get an error, but you shouldn't do this. This is something you should avoid doing, okay? Don't hold the button, because you're submitting all kinds of order modifications repeatedly to Sierra Chart, which is then being submitted to your trading service, which is basically just a lot of work on the server side for nothing. So you just submit one order modification at a time like that, okay? And that's it. So let me know what you guys think of this. I'm gonna hit out now. There's, here's a long, right? I'm gonna hit the bid to get out, hover over the bid price, press the button, and I hit out right there, okay? Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next video, cheers.